to Global Business. I am your host, Dr. Neva. Global Business is a series where we bring international guests with different expertise to talk about different situations, topics from around the globe. Today, I have a special guest for you, all the way from Mozambique, a great businesswoman, Ms. Denise Cortez, Teaser, and she will give you an insight into her world revolving around sports, being an entrepreneur, and doing business in Mozambique. But before, here's a word from our sponsor. This program is sponsored by Neva Lines. To be a sponsor of one of our segments, send us an email at info at nevalines.com. Have you been thinking about that new business and you have not been able to get started? Hi guys, I'm Dr. Neva Alexander, the owner of Neva Alliance, a company that helps small to medium business-sized companies to get started. I have a superb kit for individuals who want to get started and in that kit you will have the formation of your business, the EIN number, the business plan, the license if necessary for your type of business, the support you need, the branding, all included in that kit. Below you'll find the link to my website that you can get started today. Don't delay on creating a life legacy for you. Welcome, Denise, to Global Business. It's such a pleasure to have you. How are you doing? So uh, I'm fine. Normally, I reply that I'm divinely fine. Thank God. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm perfect. Thank you. And yourself? I am excellent. Besides the pandemic, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. So, you know, I viewed your bio, your credentials and all the information online and with all the questions I have, you know, I'm eager to ask, one of them that's popped out to me is your background in sports, being a part of, of the Mozambique Federation, soccer federation as a member. Tell us about that. So my background in sports started when I was just a little kid. I always loved to play soccer, play football with my brother and my, my neighbors. So in the first um, team that um, started playing soccer for Mozambique, I was part of it. But uh, finished when my father said, you should stop playing soccer because you need to study. So, and, and then it forced me to stop playing when uh, soccer started being more professional in Mozambique. And uh, was a dream when the team that was part of the uh, list A, if I'm not mistaken, we we're part of the list A, applying for, to manage the, the Mozambique Soccer Federation. So I was, I was part of the list and we won. We managed the football in Mozambique for four years and now. I was vice president for studies, projects, and marketing, and was a challenge, was great. I love it very much because it was part of uh, my contribution to the society because I always dreamed about changing the narrative of sports in Mozambique and also having impact when it comes to girls and women playing soccer because uh, the female role in soccer in Mozambique was a little, uh, very little. And we were the first group having two women managing soccer in Mozambique. I was in the studies project and marketing and uh, Marta Mapilelli is another lady. She was managing finance as vice president for finance and administration. Oh, wow. That was like an experience. And I was actually going to ask you, with you being a woman, did you find any like, held back from others? Or was it like a woman situation for you? I think was, um, I didn't feel that it was a woman because uh, first I have a strong personality. I don't get intimidated by people normally. And uh, another thing is the fact that our team, 
I um, was made the, of people that really encourage uh, gender equality. And in Mozambique, uh, either at the political level, sports level, uh, private sector level, we always welcome women in boards and the management uh, team. So we don't feel like we are women or men. We feel like we are human and we are fighting for the same, the same target, which is excellence always. Yes. Oh, I love that. We are human, definitely. So, you know, uh, going to your credentials in the sense, I, again, I saw that you've held a lot of leadership positions, you know, and um, before you started your company, what were those, those positions that even led you to create all? Okay, my professional journey was a little bit uh, funny because I started in order than forensic. So I, I worked for one of the big five in the world. And um, then uh, one day I just decided, okay, it's fine, it's fine for me to move to a different type of role because I was doing external auditor. And then I became internal auditor. And then I saw myself in the banking sector doing audits. And one day I just moved to the corporate world, doing managing uh, large corporate companies for one of the biggest banks in Mozambique. I would just avoid uh, staying the, uh, saying the names, mentioning the names of the, the institutions because this is not a uh, promotion. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then one day, out of the blue, I just felt like, okay, I'm in private sector, but I'm no longer working for other people. I'm working for myself. Because in this journey of um, working for, for companies, one day you just arrive in a place where institutions do downsizing. And I was one number. And when you, one number, they just cut the big number when it comes to salaries. And I was one of them. Uh, I saw myself with two kids, unemployed, and I, I started my entrepreneurial journey. That was the way I started being entrepreneur because in Africa, you become entrepreneur when you are unemployed. It's not like uh, one day you wake up and you say, I'm going to work for myself. No, 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 no. You get it. You lose your job, just clear like that, and then you just start. And my dream was to be is entrepreneur, but to start helping companies to have access to finance, to um, restructure their bad debts in the banks. But no one could understand my vision when everything started 10 years ago. For many people said, Dennis, what do you, what you want to do? And I said, I want to do this, this, this. And then you start helping friends and friends don't pay you. And I said, okay, friends don't pay me. What can I do that generates money quickly? Because my money was just started finishing at the bank. And I said, okay, I'll start doing catering. So I started doing catering. I started selling food. I started cooking for people, cooking for, for dinners, for lunches. Um, and then one day I was really tired of selling food. It was I did that for two years, by the way. And then you arrive in a stage where you, you smell food all over the place. Your clothes smell food, your shoes smell food, your skin and your hair, and you just be like, God, I can't do this anymore. And uh, I saw in the newspaper that the biggest business association in Mozambique was looking for executive director. I said, why not? Let me apply for this. And when I applied for that, I said, you know, I don't want to go as an employee. I want to go as a company providing a service because I needed a client. I needed a client that I could use in my uh, profile as, a, as an entrepreneur saying that my company did this. So then they hired me, but they hired my company to provide the service as executive director for that institution. That was the way everything started. And I started dealing with private sector, uh, government, donors, and I was one of the two faces of the private sector discussing with the government regarding doing business in Mozambique. And uh, that was important because I started uh, bringing my ideas as well to what the perfect business environment should be. And for me, it was fantastic because I, I was able to influence the laws applicable to doing business. I was participating in discussions. I was one of the first people started talking about local content in Mozambique. 
the oil and gas sector, the boom of the oil and gas. I was part of this journey and I was really, really happy to do that. I just have to say thank you for the ones that put me on the list of downsizing for that bank because they were really, really big boost for what I became. And I'm really grateful because I'm no longer part of this big corporate. I'm part of something that is really adding value to the country. So I'm really, you know, I, I, I just have to say thank you guys for releasing me for, from this big corporate world. <laughs> <laughs> they help and God help support my cause because I always dreamed about being an, an entrepreneur and having impact in the society. And these days I do, I help uh, large companies coming into the market, incorporating them in, the, in Mozambique, helping them understanding the legal framework regarding doing business. And even entrepreneurs that don't understand exactly how the, the sector, their sectors operates, uh, I can act as the light in the middle of the bush. For me, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm doing great and I'm loving it. And my life is just amazing. Every day I live my dream life, by the way. Thanks to that guy that just sent me to unemployment. I have to say. <laughs> well, you know, we, gotta, we have to turn negatives into positives. That's how we survive. You know, and you definitely did that. Your company, I just realized, I'm thinking your company is DCK, which is actually your initials. Yes, my initials, Denise Cortez Kaiser Global, which is DCK Global. And uh, we, we provide uh, advisory service for traders, investors coming to the markets, coming into Mozambique and also Africa through our network of contacts because we have contacts all over the continent. Uh, that I've built through my career and uh, we can provide this assistance in Africa. So is there a particular type of company you work with or is it a variety? So we... Like, are you focused I, on one industry or a variety of industries? Different industries, all sectors of activity from um, banking, okay. from so, fintech, everything that you can imagine we provide as, a, as assistance in, a, in Africa. And for us, it's fantastic because our network is large. We know people from Portuguese speaking countries, French speaking countries, uh, English speaking countries. So for us, it's okay. We can, we can support you locally. Very good, very good. So, you know, describe a case of doing business in Mozambique. Like how would you describe, is it, an, is it easy, you know, easy or? I think it's easy for one reason, because every investor, when the investor comes into the market, uh, to set up the company, it's easy. It's not, it's not a big deal. And also, if the company is coming with, um, with large amounts of money to invest, uh, still can still benefit uh, from tax benefits, you know, to the deduction on taxes. Um, then a part of the deduction on taxes, uh, if the company has uh, set up in the markets, for example, Africa and uh, United States, they have this AGOA agreement that allows deduction on taxes for certain products and services. So America still can benefit. And for example, if the company is, is in markets that have double taxation in, with Mozambique, can benefit from double taxation. And um, we are part of African Union, so meaning that uh, from 2021, we expect, I think will be January, there's a um, free trade agreement, which will reduce 90% in the tariffs applicable for imports in the continent and export as well. And also investors will have the same treatment as, a, as nationals of the continent that there will be free transit in terms of uh, main power in the continent, which means that if you set up a company in Mozambique, you can still do business with Nigeria, with Congo, anywhere in the continent, which is good for us. We'll Definitely. operate. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks for. Yeah. And, and so, another you know, what I've noticed lately, I don't know if it's the tension. No, I just wanted to highlight that Mozambique has uh, big reserves of oil and gas meaning that uh, the supply chain of the oil and gas, I know that America is very strong on that. 
can still explore this market because the uh, Exxon Mobil is coming into the market. Anna Dark was here, but they sold their operations in Africa. Now it's Total, and they still uh, opening doors for American companies to come. Um, the, we have other other spots of um, big reserves of oil and gas that are not explored yet, and uh, the the. the the country is still welcoming investors. And not only that, because even in agriculture, agribusiness, we still have plenty of opportunities. In the, in the area where there is uh, oil and gas activity, which is 18,000 hectares of land up north, 7,000 out of the 18 is only for agriculture. Whoever is interested in coming to invest in agriculture, uh, even in the peak, considering the peak of the oil and gas, for, for the total project, if I'm not mistaken, will be 50,000 employees working day and night, means that you need to feed them. Whoever is going to invest in agriculture in that area is going to make plenty of money. And uh, you still have uh, this Exxon uh, project. Uh, you know, I think will be money flowing from everywhere. And uh, companies can only be here. There is no chance. <laughs> Money is in Mozambique for sure. Oh. <laughs> so, well, you have my ears like, hmm, sounds interesting. Definitely. So, you know, I what I've been it. noticing is that there's a shift with um, Black Americans. And I don't know if it's because of, you know, the tension here, but individuals are looking more to move abroad. And they're looking into Africa, different countries in Africa. Is there anything that you recommend for those that are looking for opportunity? What would you say to them? I would say Africa is welcoming their kids back because by the end of the day, the sons of the continent are coming back. So, which is good, by the way. And they're coming back with uh, value added because uh, Americans have the knowledge, have the technical skills, have the academic background. They have, for example, this uh, line for investment, Exim Bank, that created the, a fund of billions of dollars for the supply chain of the oil and gas. Americans can still explore it, and the continent is here, you know. The place to be is Africa. So whoever wants to come to Africa, we, we are greenfield for oil and gas, supply chain of the oil and gas, tourists. We, we have areas for tourists better than Bahamas. I don't wanna underestimate Bahamas, not even Cuba, but we are, we are the best for sure. If you come here, you're gonna cry just to see the blue and the green and, uh, and all the, the, the bush and the animals, the safaris that you can do, the birds and the trees, the green, and it's, it's a lot of beauty in one place. We are so blessed. We have mining sector, which is very strong, diamonds, rubies, precious stones, gold, all the minerals that you can imagine we have in Mozambique. And uh, the financial sector is still, you know, greenfield for many, many investors. FinTech, we still need FinTech. Mobile money, lo uh, local remittance, international remittance, everything educational sector oh god if if i could do everything by myself honestly i i, I could do it but i can't so that's why we're still welcoming investors and we're still saying come 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 the, the, our time is now africa our time is now because for all the kids that belong to africa our skin and our blood please come back because the land of your ancestors is waiting for you. It's, it's time for you to start building again. <laughs> Beautifully said. Well, thank you so much for your time, Denise. Do you have any parting words for our audience? That's one. Uh, for whoever wants to come and you still want to get in touch, I'm on LinkedIn, Denise Cortez Kaiser. And um, my email is denise at dckafrica.com which is not DCK Global, I, my email is DCK Africa for you to get, guys to understand that I am in Africa, I'm African, I can support Africans, I'm welcoming Africans back because I know that Americans, Black Americans, 
uh, have our blood. So please come back home. And um, whoever wants to invest, <laughs> Um, no worries, we can support you in the continent. We have the, the right team to assist you. We have people that studied in Yale and based in Ghana. We have people that studied in, in Leicester in the UK based in, based in Uganda. We have people based in the Ivory Coast. We have people based in Angola. We have people based in Kenya. We have people based in Mauritius. So don't hesitate. Our time is now. We are Africans for real. Thank you. Thank you so much. Until next time, this is Global Business. Mm -hmm.